Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be talking about the new episode which aired last night. It was an amazing episode, I had such a good time, and it's so nice to have Supergirl back on TV after such a long wait. Obviously, Superman Low has finished off its season, and that is why Supergirl is back. So I'm super excited to be making videos. I have had a very busy last week or so. I've been currently filming right now, like all day, every day, waking up super early, getting back super late. That is why I haven't had so much coverage out. However, I am finishing, and so that means that I'm going to be getting back to uploading very, very often, hopefully daily, in the next few days. So be on the lookout for my coverage, and you are not going to want to miss out on any of my Supergirl videos. Obviously, we're going to be covering the final season, and I know you guys are super into Supergirl, and you're super excited to see how the season kind of pans out towards the end. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into how this episode starts. So we're going to break it down bit by bit, give my review, give my thoughts, and what it means for the future, etc. Okay, so it opens with Brainy and Nia, and they are on a mission to get Kara's welcome home cake already and the party as a whole. It's super dramatic, it's very funny, especially with Brainy on the street kind of zigzagging between people, and it was kind of like a ballet or something, and I really liked how comedic it was because it was so dramatic with the music and how serious they were for something that is like not super serious. Like, it's just a welcome home party and it's their friend. But I like that they cared so much because it's important for them and it's important for us that Supergirl is coming back so I like that they made a big deal out of her return. And after all, the episode is titled Welcome Home Kara, very fittingly. Okay, so let's move on. So Supergirl wakes up after re-energizing from Yellow Sun Energy so that is revealed why she wasn't there when Brainy shows up with a cake. And so she's in another room inside the tower and she's with Alex. So when she wakes up from her nightmares of the phantoms, obviously this is an ongoing thing that we're going to be covering this season. Specifically, like over the next couple of episodes, Kara is going to be thinking back to the Phantom Zone and how it's affected her. Doesn't seem like it's affected zor in the same way. Seems like he's been used to it for so long that it kind of doesn't phase him, but Kara was only there for a select amount of time and it was very painful because she was trying to break out and she was getting whammied by them all the time. Okay, so yeah, she wakes up, Alex is there, they hug and they properly reunite. It's so great to see that. And we get a couple of great comedic moments throughout the episode. One was literally in the scene and Kara says she never wants to hear the word phantom again. Then she lists a couple of things like not even in Star Wars, she doesn't want to see a phantom. Not even in Scooby-Doo, and I just loved that. That was just a couple of really neat kind of references that I think everyone gets, because like in Scooby-Doo, there's always a phantom, there's always a ghost, and I like that she is sort of making fun of it, but it's a serious matter, like she's got proper PTSD after this. And so, preceding this, we have Kara officially returning as she hugs and reunites with everyone, and she sees the party that they put on for her, and the cake and everything like that and then also at that point Zorel returns and he appears for the first time I think he's already greeted everyone before and so then you get a couple great lines here and there but one I specifically want to pull out and I think Melissa's line delivery is so good throughout this whole episode like that Scooby-Doo line before that I said to do with the phantoms and this one that I loved I just want to quickly recite it for you guys and she says something along the lines of, just wait till you try out your heat vision. And she says, cold coffee? Not anymore. And it was just great. It made me laugh and I wanted to bring it up. And so I liked that they had the scene, you had the return of Kara, but also you had the introduction of zor to the rest of the team. Okay, so let's move on from this. And a big theme throughout this episode, and I think a big theme continuing on into the rest of the season, is going to be to do in the environment. And zor brings across some very, very obvious comparisons between Krypton and how it died and, you know, how it exploded to what is happening with the climate crisis on Earth right now. Obviously, it's very topical, and I did like how they actually went about it this episode. And so zor wants to see Kara's life 
on Earth before he actually leaves. This leads to him figuring out that maybe there is a way that he can sort out the climate crisis right now. Although it's very optimistic and obviously in the end it doesn't actually work, it does backfire against them. Which basically gives you the answer that it's way too hard for like one person to do it. Like everyone needs to make a change and not have these garbage patches in the middle of the ocean. And if they weren't there, you wouldn't have that problem in the first place. So yeah, I really liked the way that they touch upon these topics in this episode. And so zor wants to see Kara's life on Earth as previously mentioned. And this is all before he wants to go to Argo City and reunite with his wife, Allura, obviously Kara's mum. And so he actually does do that at the end of the episode. That is his kind of ending. I don't know if we're going to see him again. I presume maybe like one more time. But zor is officially leaving. He's going to Argo City. He's going to be there with Allura. I don't know if we're going to go to Argo City this season. It would be cool if we did. However, that is up in the air as of right now. But... So this is going to be him leaving from Kara's life once again, but it's okay. I think she can always visit at any time, and lots of people have been theorizing that at the end of the season, maybe Kara is going to be going to Argo City, and that's where she goes, so you don't have any, like, continuity issues in the era of us being like, where is Supergirl? Why can't Supergirl come in the crossover? And why no one references her? Well, that's because she is off Earth, or she is somewhere else. Okay, so let's move on. So we have Kara reuniting with William in this episode. And so Kara is very worried about him because she didn't even say goodbye to him. And obviously there was a kind of thing going on there. And they never properly played it out. They went on a date or something. But that's about it, as far as I can recall. And so Nia reveals like, oh, don't worry about it. I've made up stories for all of these people, including Andrea and also William. And William totally understands because when he met Kara for the first time, William was actually undercover. And so he's like, yeah, it's no problem. Like, seriously. And I like that that was his response because it makes sense. He knows what Kara was doing and he's lived that life essentially before. And he's had to leave out people without saying goodbye. But anyway, so he reveals he's seen someone else. And so it seems like Kara and William is officially not a thing and it's not going to be happening because... William has seen someone, I don't think we're going to see that someone, whoever that person turns out to be, because I don't think they have the time for that. However, this means that Kara is free, and with Mona returning at the end of the season, could it be that they're setting up for that? It's very possible that they found out, and they were like, oh, we can get Mona back, so let's end off the season and end off the series with them going off together. That would make a lot of sense, that's kind of what went through my head at that point when William revealed he was seeing someone else. But let's move on from that. So Kara reunites with Andrea literally right after that. It's a cool shot where the camera moves back. We have Nia and we have Uncle Archie walking away. And this is inside Catco. And so Andrea comes and she talks to Kara for the first time in a while. Obviously, she thinks that Kara has been on this undercover mission as a journalist trying to get a article and a story on this guy. However, Kara reveals to her that this fake story is actually not going to be happening because the guy apparently decided against saying anything on the record and he would deny everything. So yeah, that was a pretty sticky situation for Kara to be in on her first day back. Definitely not on the right side of Andrea. However, this leads on to what happens next with Andrea who wants William and Kara to focus on finding out who the super friends are. This comes at the end of the episode actually, where Andrea has been snooping, she finds a couple of files on the super friends, so she gets the basic details, like she knows Supergirl's name's Kara Zarel. she knows that she works with Marsh Manhunter, aka Hank Henshaw, I presume that's the name that they probably will know him by. And so that's when Andrea's like, to William and Carl, this is what we gotta be focusing on. Like, this is gonna be a huge story that's going to make us stand out from the rest of the outlets because no one else is gonna have this information and no one has that connection like Kara does to Supergirl. Obviously, we know that they are the same person, but Andrea doesn't know that. So it's gonna be a sticky conundrum for Kara if she wants to sort of reveal any details about the Super Friends. I presume at the end of the season there is going to be some big revelations because they are going to be ending off the series and I think their legacies is going to be a very important thing as we head towards the end of the show because I think they're definitely going to be cemented in National City's history. 
Alright, so let's move on from this. Andrea also says to Kara that she has to research and try and get an interview with Supergirl about the Phantoms. And obviously Kara has a problem with the Phantoms because she does have a form of PTSD. No matter how big or small it is, it's affecting her and it's going to be a tough call. So again, Kara is in another conundrum to do with her job at Katko because she has been asked to do stuff that is tricky and she doesn't actually want to talk about it because it brings up all these dark feelings inside of her that she was feeling inside the Phantom Zone. But we do have a couple of cool CGI shots throughout this episode. Some of the green screen shots with Kara and Zorel are not like the best lighting. I guess they were just trying to match what was going on because the sun was very bright in the shots. However, for the wide shots where you just see the two figures flying in the sky and with the actual satellite crashing, they did a really good job. It kind of looks like something out of Superman Lois and I'm impressed. I definitely think they've upped their game with their CGI this season. Not talking about the green screen stuff, but you know, just the CGI models where no actors are there. It's pretty good. But then after this, we have Supergirl and Zorel, who was trying to stop this rubbish patch from being on fire. They were able to put it out, but it turns out it doesn't go out and it's reignited as they leave. And so they go to the fortress at this point and they change Kalex into something new, but it backfires as he's transformed into a monster as all these pieces get stuck on him just whilst he's trying to eradicate all of the items at this location in the middle of the ocean at the rubbish patch and so this is a big learning lesson for Zorel, who thinks he can save earth like he failed to do krypton so he wants to do justice essentially for himself but that backfires with you know kalex being turned into something completely different and being taken over essentially so it's a very big deal and i like the way that they did it and i thought the monster actually looked really cool I think, again, a very good job with the CGI. I was super engaged with the story and even watching it back, I have to say, like, this episode really works as a whole and I think that everyone is on the top game, especially Melissa, and it's so nice to see the whole of Team Supergirl back together because it's not often that we have had that this season. We had it in episode one and that's literally it. Like, Supergirl was away in the Phantom Zone the whole time. Yes, she was on the show, but she was on a different section. She wasn't with the other characters, so it's very nice to see this. And so Team Supergirl, they face off against the rubbish creature. I don't know what specifically to call him. However, Brainy is the one that kind of stops him because he absolutely slates him. He's like, hey, look at me, you stupid idiot. And then he goes and he lets him pick him up and then he puts a virus and it's able to stop him and basically turns back to normal Kalex, which is nice to see that he's not completely destroyed despite being taken over by all this rubbish. And so then we head towards the end of the episode, we have Kara who's talking about the Phantom Zone and her emotional feelings with Alex. This is your kind of classic Danvers sisters couch scene, although it's a much more somber iteration of that. However, also they're on the ground, so it's not really a couch scene, but the couch is there. And we're sure to get plenty more of that as we head towards the final episodes of this season. And so it's great to see them acknowledging Kara's nightmares and, you know, her feelings about the Phantom Zone because it was very shocking for her and it was something completely new and it definitely has left a lasting impact on her. So it's definitely good that they're touching upon it and not glossing over it and not forgetting about it. And let's move on to the final shot of the episode. This is our sort of cliffhanger of the episode. And we have Nia who wakes up from a dream and she says Nixley. Now, I'm not sure if she's actually specifically met Nixley yet. I could be totally wrong about that. However, it's a big deal because Nixley is somehow able to use her magic to get inside Nia's dreams and she is communicating some sort of message. We know that that's going to be happening in the next episode. Nia is going to be going inside her dreams or going to a specific place in real life and she's going to be meeting Nixley who obviously escaped the Phantom Zone on the top of the ship when Kara returned. So seems like Nixley is going to be our villain for at least the first bit of the last part of the season. But yeah, so that's about it for this video guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, 
please be sure to leave a like and a comment to not miss any Supergirl videos because we're going to be making lots. Obviously, next Tuesday, we have episode 9. Very excited for that. We also have a new trailer that's been released. I'll release my trailer breakdown for that tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that video. Also, remember, I've got my live stream tomorrow that I do every Thursday. Please be sure to not miss out on that. Obviously, I haven't done as many videos this week, so it would be really great if you guys can come and support on the live stream tomorrow night. Not sure what specific time, but normally it's around 9 p.m. UK time, which is about 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in New York and the East Coast of America. So translate it to wherever you are. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.